Hello, I'm Patricia Pellica, Professor of Medicine at Mayo Clinic and Consultant in Cardiovascular Diseases at Mayo Clinic. I'm also dr the director of the ECHO Lab there. I'm here at the International Academy of Cardiology Annual Scientific Sessions in Boston, and I gave a presentation on handheld cardiac ultrasound, the role in clinical practice. Now, handheld cardiac ultrasound refers to these very portable small devices that are being used sometimes um, possibly as a surrogate for the full standard transthoracic echocardiography. These portable devices uh, weigh even less than a pound, and some of them can fit into the pocket of a lab coat, so very small devices. However, these do have some limitations. Um, they don't have a zoom function, so you can't expand an area of interest. Uh, they don't have Doppler, and they don't have the quantitative measurement packages or the special variety of transducers. You can't do three-dimensional imaging or strain rate imaging, and you can only do linear measurements. We did a research study, though, comparing the information from a full handheld study uh, trying to do uh, a very comprehensive and systematic study with the handheld device um, and compared it to the full transthoracic echocardiogram. We did this in 190 patients who were referred for a clinically indicated transthoracic echocardiogram. So the handheld device studies were done by an, a sonographer. We put them onto a computer and then they were reviewed by uh, cardiologists with the same level of training as those that review our standard transthoracic echocardiograms. We found a pretty good concordance for simple linear measurements such as ventricular chamber sizes and aortic dimensions. However, there were some important limitations with the handheld device. As you might expect, when you don't have Doppler assessment, we did uh, have some underestimation of valvular heart disease. Um, and there were other circumstances in which we missed certain findings. Uh, it was less satisfactory for assessment of regional wall motion abnormalities. And overall, we missed findings in about 26% of patients. So a significant limitations, despite a very thorough and comprehensive protocol with a handheld. So how should these devices be used in current practice? I think they're nice as an extension of the physical examination. Uh, they might be used when a full echocardiogram is not immediately available, such as in an emergency situation. Uh, they might also be helpful where in remote areas where it's not possible to do full echocardiography, like we did, them, did use them in a medical mission camp in India. Uh, they also might be used after a patient has had a full echocardiogram just for a limited follow-up of some findings such as monitoring inferior vena cava size in a patient with heart failure. However, it's possible that the role of these devices will change over time um, and we just need more information and to follow this with interest. Thank you.